it didn't look like it should be able to fly. Despite Blom and Voss being a famed ship and seaplane builder during World War II, it might be the creation of the BV-141 for which it's most remembered, despite only 20 in some form or another having actually been built. The German airframe was easily distinguished by its unique structural asymmetry, a single engine on the main body of the aircraft, with a pod containing the pilot, an observer, and a rear gunner mounted on the starboard side. The BV-141 was initially intended to be a reconnaissance plane, and sought to offer unparalleled visibility from the pod compared to other single-engine cockpits, where clear sightlines were greatly restricted. The Reichsluftfahrt Ministerium was reportedly aghast when the bizarre configuration was submitted as a proposal in a design contest. Yet the plane won over a number of fans, most notably Luftwaffe Colonel General Ernst Udet, after it satisfied nearly every mission requirement in testing. Hermann Göring, Luftwaffe's Supreme Commander, remained unconvinced. Competing against the BV-141 were the Focke-Wulf FW-189 Uhu and the Arado AR-198. Even though the contest design requirements demanded a single-engine aircraft proposal, both submitted twin-engine designs. Chief designer of the BV-141, Dr. Richard Fucht, refused to be moved, however, and pushed forward with an unusual prototype. The German Reichsluftfahrt Ministerium mandated a single-engine three-seater aircraft for short-range reconnaissance and observation. They emphasized it have excellent visibility. In response, both Arado and Focke-Wulf submitted proposals. The head of Hamburger Flugzeugbau, Richard Fucht, pursued a novel approach with Blom and Voss, Hamburger Flugzeugbau's parent company. At that time, the aircraft company was mostly known for its flying boats or float planes, which were used by the German Luftwaffe. Yet the Reichsluftfahrt Ministerium had all but promised Arado the contract for the airplane. They were developing the AR-198, favored by German officials at the time. Yet that aircraft turned out to be a disappointment and was subsequently abandoned. After Arado's attempt, Focke-Wulf earned the contract for its FW-189 Uhu. They failed to provide single engine because of the twin boom design, which required two small engines. Richard Fuchs' proposal was a part of his passion project. However, the German government had not invited him or Blomann Voss to participate. Nevertheless, he did not let that stop him. He delivered a unique asymmetrical design. His belief was that the only way to create the intended single engine plane was to develop a light bomber with an asymmetrical configuration. Walter Blom and his company long held the idea that military need for flying boats would give way to commercial business after the war. Seaplanes would eventually replace passenger ferries and boat lines to transport people across continents and countries. Following this line of thinking, Blom and Voss always sought to keep their designs and developments considering possible commercial interest despite their limited capacity. Previous World War I infantryman and aviator Richard Fucht designed his own aircraft for over 10 years before joining Blom and Voss. Although his early designs didn't suffice, he did create a name for himself in the aviation industry. It was familiar described him as an ambitious and outspoken character who was focused and driven. With a unique vision for the future of aviation, he held his designs to higher standards than the industry. Rather than work on traditional aircraft, he wanted to innovate. As World War II began, aircraft production transitioned from wood and canvas biplanes to metal monoplanes. Design and development took a conventional approach to military and civilian planes. This model required a contoured fuselage that tapered at the rear with an engine in front of the cockpit. Furthermore, almost all designs featured standardized straight-edge wings in the forward portion of the airframe, with vertical fins positioned at the tail. Few tried to innovate 
yet engineers struggled with drawbacks to the conventional airframes. First, the cockpit's design left crews with poor visibility above and behind its wings and engine. Since the forward-mounted engine was almost always centralized, the propeller's air circulated motion in a way that aggressively hit rudders. This forced the planes to run counter to pilot controls. Not only that, but the conventional engine placement forced pilots to regularly counteract the unwanted friction. The plane's torque skewed flight to one side, caused by the conventional plane's powerful engine needed to rotate its large propeller. Although symmetrical airframes were the norm, the planes did not fly symmetrically. Therefore, Richard Folk sought to find another type of design that could provide symmetric performance and handling. The Blomann Voss BB-141 was a standout aircraft for its unique design. It used plexiglass glazed gondola starboard, which provided excellent visibility similar to that of the FW-189, but with even more glass paneling. This cockpit could carry a pilot, an observer, and a gunner to man rear artillery. The fuselage on the port side carried the BMW-132N radial engine and extended to the tail unit. At first look, the aircraft's weight distribution seemed like it would cause roll. However, weight was evenly supported by lift. The original design laid out a symmetrical tailplane, made asymmetrical for the 141B, with the starboard tailplane removed to improve the rear gunner's view for firing. The initial prototype, while novel, was still conventional compared to the final form. A pair of slim booms, one of them slightly offset towards the port side of the center line, generated the power plant and tail unit. The other, offset toward starboard, had a plexiglass crew nacelle. This provided excellent visibility for the three-man crew. With two cylindrical structures attached to each other using a single, long, straight-edged wing design with clipped tips, the wings were mounted towards the front of the design in standard monoplane configuration. The tail unit, or empennage, was simply a rounded, highly swept tailplane and a horizontal tailplane towards the port side. This first design carried a conventional radial piston-powered three-blade propeller system charged by a single BMW 801A engine with 1,560 horsepower and a maximum speed of 272 miles per hour. This first prototype could fly up to 31,810 feet with a range of 1,181 miles. Once the final design was set, the BB-141 featured its single tail system with an asymmetrical arrangement. The plane distributed its weight and fixed the handling problems which plagued previous aircraft. Blom and Voss contributed significantly to the development of float planes used by the German Air Force for strategic bombing during World War II. Yet their contribution to asymmetric design was also significant. The engineers developing the aircraft knew it would be one of the most unique planes of the World War II era. In line with the novel planes and military developments Germany produced, developers knew that keeping the engine in the nose without placing the cockpit above it would offer more efficient aerodynamics than conventionally arranged aircraft. Furthermore, this choice would prove an asymmetric airframe could maintain the same quality of performance and handling as symmetric models. Walter Blom hoped that the BB-141 would bewilder the enemy due to its shape and lead them to believe it was a fighter and not a bomber. From the start of development in 1938, his company found that a plane capable of going against the Hurricane Mk-1 was needed. The intrepid Hurricane aircraft had been used previously by allies on the Western Front and was still being used. Unfortunately, their passion project and excitement led to several errors being overlooked until prototypes were fully produced. The first major problem was that the rudder was under constant assault from drag. Another prominent issue was the cockpit placement. While novel and helpful for aerodynamics, it left crews vulnerable. The more extended wing was lengthened to maintain balance, needed for the additional weight of the machine guns and crew. Three prototypes were completed for testing, 
with an evaluation batch of five of version A. Production was reportedly backed by German pilot and Luftwaffe general Ernst Udet. Yet the Reichsluftfahrt Ministerium established on April 4th, 1940, that while the plane mostly exceeded expectations, it still underperformed. Nevertheless, it showed promise as a reconnaissance plane. Therefore, in 1939, Germany ordered 500 BB-141s. Although the engineers and designers were somewhat disappointed that their intended bomber failed, they were grateful to receive a contract at all. By 1941, production was almost ready to enter full swing. Yet after 12 examples were shown, the German government decided that the unique design of the BV-141 couldn't be produced as efficiently as more conventional aircraft. Instead, they still relied on their significant stock of Focke Wolf 189s, which performed well enough. The 12 confirmed production aircraft featured more powerful and impressive BMW 801 engines, which may have also played a role in the plane's cancellation, as these engines were still urgently needed for the FW-109 fighter plane. The fate of the BB-141 was ultimately sealed after an Allied bombing raid destroyed the Focke Wolf factory in Bremen. It was manufacturing the FW-200 Condor, an aircraft model used as one of Hitler's personal transport and envisioned as a heavy bomber supporting Germany's thrust into the Soviet Union. Blom and Voss could do nothing, as much of their production capacity was taken over by the Condor. As the Allies took Germany, soldiers discovered the wreckage of several BB-141s. At least one was collected by British forces and sent back to England for examination. Record entries in the bibliography of scientific and industrial reports suggest that the U.S.'s Air Material Command may have gotten their hands on at least one other BB-141 for testing as well. Based on German records of production, a total of 20 BB-141Bs were produced, rather than the widely believed set of only 12. None of the aircraft or its 38 planned variants ever saw combat. Some were only ever piloted during testing between 1939 and 1940. The initial plan to send as many of them to the Eastern Front as possible for reconnaissance never materialized. Sadly, not a single Blomenfoss BB-141 survives to this day. As the war in Europe concluded, Richard Fuchs was brought to the United States as part of Operation Paperclip, where his interest in unconventional aircraft designs continued. He reportedly worked on designs for nuclear-powered bombers, before joining Boeing as a civilian consultant. In 